For buttonholes on the Bernina 350, we're gonna use buttonhole number 10, or on the zero button, as well as buttonhole number 11, the keyhole buttonhole. So for starting off, this requires a whole separate foot. We're gonna take off the standard foot, and this foot, 3A, has a couple features that will provide us with markings so we get the same buttonhole that are always the same length. So this red mark is gonna move up or down depending on the length of our button. So we're just gonna tip this in from the side here. Now go up, latch it into place. I'm gonna go ahead, also in your manual, you're gonna find that it's gonna reference the bobbin case and the finger that can be threaded here. So notice there is a hole in the finger of the bobbin case. When you take your thread, up the end so it's not fuzzy, and thread it through the finger. Now it's gonna be kind of up and at an angle here. Just go ahead and kind of get it started. Here's a fairly big hole. That is gonna give us a little bit more tension to the bobbin. By doing this, our satin stitches are gonna be prettier, more raised. I also use this when I'm do, doing decorative stitches where I might be using decorative threads in the top and then switch, just having a neutral thread in the bobbin and I always wanna make sure that my top thread is pulled to the back side. That is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna thread the finger of the bobbin case and then forget about it. Don't forget to undo it, of course, when it's done. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take and measure our button. So this is measured out at Let's call that 14 millimeters. Now we need to measure for the height of it, one millimeter for both ends. That's gonna also allow for the bar tack here. So 14 is gonna turn into 16 millimeters. Take this red marker that will move along the side and we'll set it for 16. Great, let's do a standard buttonhole. So number 10 on your screen. Now the only thing we need to do for starting is go ahead and have a place that is marked for our start position. Let's go ahead and just mark it right there. We'll center the needle right over that mark. Now this first one we always are gonna use a test anyway. So we're testing out that it's long enough for the button to actually go through and it's all working for the fabric you're working with. Now there isn't a groove on this particular foot. So either just thread it down through or hold it off to the side while you get started. What I usually do is just take a few stitches, let it start sewing and then stop and I'm gonna clip my thread that I'm holding. Now there's also a red line that is moving with the needle towards the red marker. Those two are going to get closer and when they meet, you're gonna stop sewing. Touch the reverse button one time, and that is gonna set the length. That's the only thing you have to do for buttonholes. Isn't that awesome? It's gonna stitch back to the beginning, do the tack at the top, and then stitch down the right leg of the buttonhole. It knows where we told it to turn around, so that's where it's gonna sew to. It'll tack at the bottom, keep stitching until it stops. There's a few locking stitches. Now notice, when you lift up the presser foot, the foot is going to reset. So that means don't lift it up in the middle of buttonholes because, uh, well, you, you kind of have a reset to, to take care of there. Look how pretty that is. If you're using a little thicker thread, you might need to lengthen that stitch length just a little bit. That almost looks like a little too thick for this thread and this fabric, but absolutely a gorgeous buttonhole. What you can also do for opening this is do a little fray check down the middle, let it dry for about five minutes, and Bernina makes a buttonhole cutter and block. You put the block of wood behind here, slice down with the cutter. It looks kind of like a chisel, but it's very sharp. Makes one perfect slit down each buttonhole. Now, if you've done this correctly, on your screen, it will say auto. Auto means that it knows what length that your next two through 100 buttonholes will be. And all you have to do is put your hands in the lap and let the machine do all the work for you because it knows when to turn around. So the only thing we had to do on the very first buttonhole was touch the reverse button one time to set the length. Keep your foot on the foot control until the machine comes to a complete stop. Sounds like a roller coaster ride there, but how fun is that when you can do buttonhole after buttonhole. You know, there's a lot of places that you can place buttonholes from places where like a drawstring uh, pair of pants or a bag, um, use it as a tie back, anything with shower curtains, you need little hooks to go through. There's a lot of places buttonholes 
are seen on items, um, purses, other than just clothing. So number 11 is our keyhole buttonhole. So number sign, one, one. And once we choose a new style of buttonhole, then that length has been erased. So if you had done this first one, and that wasn't the right length, you can just push clear and that will clear it out and let you reset to a new size. So once again, we have to stitch down. Now a keyhole buttonhole is gonna do something a little differently. It's gonna sew little tiny stitches straight. People always go, oh no, it's not working, but it is. So we're gonna sew, we'll just use that same length as the marker. So when it gets there, I'm gonna touch the reverse button one time and then just go ahead and let it do its thing. It's gonna go ahead and do the keyhole at the bottom and then stitch back to where it started. and then kind of do the other side. Kind of turns out a little bit more opposite than what we had there. Little locking stitch. And then we have a keyhole. This is gonna be for where you might have a coat button, a button with a shank that's gonna sit down in that keyhole opening here. You have one other thing that's gonna be very similar to a buttonhole, and it's called a straight stitch eyelet. It is number 13. Let's do number sign, one, three. And it does tell me to take the buttonhole foot off and do a standard presser foot. Look at this, it's just gonna be a little circle all the way around. The finger of my bobbin case is still threaded, but that's a fun little circle. Whoa, that's not a circle. That is because my balance is still set from the last time I did it. I bet the balance is off. So if you need a six, that's how you're gonna do it. So I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna go ahead and peek underneath here. Sure enough, when you do the balance video, don't forget to turn it back. So now that it's back to normal, we'll do the straight stitch. <laughs> Eyelid again. Oh, look at that, so much more pretty. And I bet that's why my keyhole buttonhole was a little kind of wonky there too. So I might even for fun, let's do another keyhole buttonhole. You know, buttonholes are so easy on the Berninas that you can just go ahead and Switch it out and do another one. Okay, keyhole buttonhole coming up. That was number 111. There you go. So down, new length needs to be reset. Oh, so much prettier. Don't we all do things like that? So do I. All right, I get excited and I keep doing things, but don't forget where, you're, where you left some of your projects. This is what it looks like unbalanced. That's what it looks like when it's lifelike. Let's do a corded buttonhole next. Let's test out a corded buttonhole. So take some cording and fold it in half so you have a loop to hold on to. If you look at the back of your buttonhole foot, there's a little peg sticking straight up. Loop it around that peg, draw it underneath, and right up the front of the toes. There is a little slot for each cord, one on the right and one on the left. Did you see how I kind of lifted it over the edge here and see how the cord is perfectly spaced for the buttonhole to stitch over? Then just go ahead and do the buttonhole just like you did before. Flip this up, have your starting place and start to sew. If your thread is up top above your foot, just go ahead and hold on to it until you take a few stitches and then you can stop and cut it off there. So a corded buttonhole is perfect for when you have something that is of a stretchy fabric or really heavy fabrics, maybe like on a coat, a wool coat would be a great place for this to go. Let's go ahead and set this out. Touch the reverse button one time and it'll finish out the other side. You don't even have to think about where that cord is. It's just gonna be held in place for you because of the way the foot positions it. Lift it up, take the cord out of its front little toes. Then, see this cord up here that's looped? Just take a hold of one of the lower ones and pull until that loop completely disappears. Just enough. Now that is very solid, it's very stable. I'm gonna first cut this little thread away and then clip away the cord. You can just clip them and then they get a little pull, they disappear and you will never know, but boy, it really makes it look very sharp. 